Hello guys, Bowlcube here, and welcome back to Angels of Scaly Wings. This time featuring at least 100% more dragons. Probably, I don't know, I haven't, ch I haven't checked. Anyway, let us continue. I awoke from uneasy dreams, looking at an unfamiliar ceiling. Just for a moment, I wondered where I was before the events of last night all came back to me. After a good stretch, I looked around the room, illuminated by the sunlight coming in from the window. Outside, in the distance, the portal I had emerged from proudly stood on the peak of a small hill. Getting ready, I noticed something lying on the table. It was the note Remy had left me in case I needed anything. Along with his own home phone and work number, there were also some numbers for delivery of food and other necessities, as well as emergency and even janitorial services. He had certainly thought of everything, even though I now had to wonder what a dragon plumber might look like. My musings were interrupted when the doorbell rang. I opened the door. I was met by another dragon. <laughs> well, I mean, he looks more like a velociraptor, but sure. Dragon. Uh, hello! You must be Bubble Cube. I'm Sebastian, and I'll be your escort. Or security, I suppose. Usually I work for the police, though. Nice to meet you. He seemed a lot smaller than Remy, and when he somewhat nervously extended his arm towards me, I noticed he apparently only walked on his hind legs, with the two forelimbs instead having distinct arms, hands, and fingers. Let's shake his hand. I mean, kissing his hand seems a little... odd. When I took his hand into mine to shake it gently, I could feel the individual bumps and scales on his rough skin. Nice to meet you too, Sebastian. So, where are you taking me? Straight to business, eh? We're going to visit the plant where they are making your generators. They have some news for you, or so I've heard. Reza will be there too. Sounds great. Just follow me. While we walked, I was under the impression we were purposefully avoiding the busier parts of town, instead straying towards the edges and small alleys as not to garner too much attention. Even then, we got the occasional stare. After just a couple of minutes, we arrived at our destination, where we were met by Reza, as well as yet another dragon, a vicious looking beast that didn't stay too close to him. Ah, oh, there he is. There's our BFF. Oh yeah, and also the human. No, I'm joking. <laughs> hey. Reza, long... Ah, oh, for God's sake. Sorry, it's just... You, you see a long time no see. Far too often. It's like everyone's favourite phrase for... Hey, we haven't caught up in a while. Just, nope, long time no see. Everyone just spouts it all the time. It, it's, it's, it's like, for me... A long time no see is the Wilhelm scream of literacy. Just, you'll, just, I guarantee, now that I've pointed it out, you will also notice it a lot more in media. But anyway, that's a complete sidetrack. Reza, a long time no see. How true that is. Good to finally see another human face around here. What a coincidence to have you, of all people, show up. Yeah, I guess those degrees aren't so useless after all. I'm definitely using the degree I got from university. <laughs> By the way, who's your friend? Just my bodyguard, same as yours. Don't bother with him, he doesn't talk much. Uh, he's been quite talkative, so... He, d he did look pretty grumpy. That that's what he always looks like. And yes, that does mean he's always grumpy. The two dragons exchanged a few words, and as I met the gaze of the larger, tenebrous dragon a few paces from us, Sebastian turned towards me and spoke up again. Hey Bubble Cube, this is Maverick. Nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. Just don't expect me to give you any special treatment like everyone else is, and we'll be good. What are you talking about? So you're saying you haven't noticed the stairs, and how they all treat you like you're the next messiah or something? No, I just thought... 
We're not the ones making a big deal out of this, you are. We're just here to get what we agreed on, then we'll be gone. If, if anything, I'd prefer you left us alone. But you're the one who insists on following me around wherever I go. A growl escaped the darker dragon's trembling lips as he bared his teeth at rest. That was pretty threatening, jeez. <laughs> alright, alright, that's quite enough. Let's just all go inside already, shall we? After you. The crisis was quickly averted as we entered the building, which was characterised by its many floors, high ceilings, and long narrow hallways as Sebastian led us to our destination. There you are! I was waiting for you! Oh, uh, wait a minute. I thought we were going to meet the guys from production. What are you doing here? They're only coming in later today. You'll just have to make do with me. Well, Bubble Cube, this is Hannah. She kind of manages this building. Though, actually, she's more involved with the research wing rather than production and engineering. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, my pleasure. I have something for you, by the way. It will take them a while to make all the generators we promised. But we've got one for you here. Feel free to send it home and give it a test. Jeez, we need a bloody whoosh sound effect there. <laughs> That's great, I'll take it. No, seriously, give it to me already. I need this. It looks a little small if you ask me. Don't underestimate its power. Oh, and do be careful not to drop it. Sure. I'll be waiting outside while you do your thing, Bubble Cube. I suppose I'll wait for you outside as well. Oh, what thing? Oh, have you bought the PDA? Uh, of course, here you go. Alright, now to give this thing a test run. The PDA lit up as a hand swiftly moved around its interface in calculated motions. By the way, would you consider letting me run some tests on you as well? It would only take a drop of your blood. What? Why? I work in biology, so obviously this kind of thing would be very interesting to us. I'd share the results with you, of course. I'm a trusting guy, why not? Great. She was quick to produce a small device from a drawer. Where? That, 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 that looks like a corridor, but... Which, from a glance, reminded me a lot of a test tube. Now, if you would give me your hand, please. As I reached out to her, she took my hand into hers before she pressed the device into the back of my hand. I winced as pain jolted through my hand. Something sharp drove itself through my skin, and shortly afterwards, a droplet of blood was sucked into the tube attached to the small needle. Thanks. Your... Welcome? Looks like your PDA is good, by the way, so we're just about done here. And since we both work in biology, it could be interesting if you want to meet me some other time as well. Here's my number. Alright. <laughs> I've been here five minutes already, already getting girls' numbers. <laughs> Why doesn't real life work like this? See you soon. Well, uh, that was interesting. Did she ask you for your blood too? Yeah. Did you give it to her? Yeah, I gave it to her. <laughs> that was a bad joke. But, uh, oh well. Oh, uh, well, it's your choice. We've got no idea what they might do with it, though. I'm getting hungry. How about some breakfast? I'm all for it. I can't stand early mornings like this. That shouldn't be a problem. There's a cafe not far from here. What'd you say, Mavers? I wouldn't mind a grab to bite myself. That settles, that settles it then. Luckily for us, the cafe was mostly empty when we arrived, as it was still pretty early in the day. Rosa was quick to lead me to a table for two, prompting the dragons to get one of their own at the other side of the restaurant. Ugh, finally. I can't stand that guy being on my tail all the damn time. 
it does seem rather strange that they need someone following us everywhere. I will give them that. Yeah, I'm not buying their shtick about how it's to keep us safe. We were approached by an individual who appeared to be the waitress of the cafe. She was an interesting looking dragon who, unlike the others I had seen so far, was more akin to a wyvern, possessing two rather large wings as her forelimbs, which resembled those of an oversized bat. Oh! It's the humans! What? Where? Sorry, wait, where? He's impressed. <laughs> That's a good one! I've, the voice has probably just abruptly changed there. Oh, well. Welcome to our establishment. My name's Dean, and I'll be your waitress today. But what can I bring you to? So... Now, I don't drink coffee, so I wouldn't pick that. I would go for scrambled eggs and bacon, but there's an achievement for picking today's special. So... We do want to try and get all the achievements at some point through this, so... Yeah, me too. Just make it quick. Sure thing. Two specials coming right up. As I was saying, if you look at the big picture, don't you think there's just something off about this whole place? Where is it, really? If this is supposed to be a completely separate place from Earth, or even a different dimension, some things just don't add up. Don't you think so, too? Let me just grab my tinfoil hat real quick. I've been here much longer than you have been. Maybe you'll see soon enough. I can't really say much more if you know who over there. He's probably listening to us right now. He doesn't seem so bad to me. I mean, he's kind of an asshole, but... Actually, yeah, he's, he's been a complete asshole. What a creep. When I let my gaze wander, I saw that Maverick was looking in my direction. Our eyes met briefly, and it was in that moment I knew I had met my one true... Uh, sorry, getting, getting sidetracked. Uh, <laughs> our eyes met briefly, his expression not showing any discernible emotion. Well, I wondered if it had just been a coincidence, or if he really was able to hear us from the distance. I... I do have some theories, and if I'm right, we might be in trouble. What kind of trouble? What are you talking about? Shh! Be quiet. I'll let you know more as soon as I can. Uh, but for now, uh, let's just play along. After all, we already have one of these babies. He patted the generator's box for emphasis. God knows we need them. Oh, here she comes. The female returned, astounding me with her ability to balance the dishes on the edge of her wings. She placed a forelimb on the table, and proceeded to move the dishes from her wing to us, with a gentle push of her snout. There you go. Watch out, it's hot. Thanks. You're welcome. Apparently, today's special consisted of an odd-looking fish of some sort. I was a little hesitant to try it, but considering the steam coming from it, it was probably better to wait a few minutes anyway. When the waitress brought out the meals to the two dragons across the cafe and exchanged a few words with them, Reza leaned forward and whispered something to me. I'll send you a letter with a coded message later. You all know what to do. Reza rose from his seat before he made it known to me that he still had a few things to do, and left the restaurant, followed shortly after by the larger of two dragons. I wonder if he got, even got to eat his food. You, you, I, I'm gonna, you know, show off the rewind. The rewind. I'm gonna show off the rewind uh, feature because you can tell that he did that on purpose. See, he doesn't look happy, and as soon as he goes to leave, he's smiling. He is doing that on purpose to annoy Maverick. But you haven't even touched your fish. Well, I wasn't in a hurry. So I spent a few more minutes in contemplation while I looked out the window. Not that this whole situation wasn't bizarre enough, but there was also now the vague sense of danger conveyed by Reza's earlier words. I did not even have an idea what kind of threat might be lurking out there. Eventually, I took a bite of my somewhat unusual breakfast, 
But while I already thought that the smell was quite peculiar, the taste had been even worse. I imagined it might be the kind of delicacy that had an acquired taste, one that I certainly hadn't acquired yet. I decided to go outside before it was too late. Are you done? Sure am. How'd you like it? I'll just say it's probably not for me. And you wouldn't be the only one to say that. You'd better wait outside just in case it decides to come up again. Yay! We tried the odd looking fish. Sure thing. I stepped outside, taking in the scenery of this strangely familiar world. In the short time that I was here, I had already found the similarities between their world and our own utterly fascinating. After all, we were talking about an unmapped place with a never-before-seen form of life. As far as discoveries were concerned, even something as simple as a new unicellular organism, or even bacteria, would have been remarkable. Yet, here I was, standing in the middle of a village evidently built by this race of intelligent, talking dragons, with a society not unlike our own. Reza didn't seem to share the same interest, and instead was more smitten with the generator. But given our reasons for coming here in the first place, I couldn't blame him for his enthusiasm being focused on something else. My thoughts were interrupted as something suddenly zipped past me, just a little too close, causing me to stumble back. It was a rather small dragon, with a bag clamped in its maw, who apparently had somewhere to be. Ah, oh, now that's a cute dragon. I regained my footing, and watched as it disappeared into the distance. Even though I'd seen enough dragons to recognise their variations in size, colour, and other attributes, I guess this one must have been a juvenile of its species. Shortly afterwards, Sebastian joined me outside, having taken care of the tab. I gave her a generous tip on your behalf. I hope you don't mind. Of course not, as long as I'm not paying. I mean, do I look like I'm made out of dragon money? Don't worry about it. In any case, now that you've given us the PDA, and Reza has the generator, you're free for today. So, if you want to go anywhere in particular, let me know. Or I could show you around town. I was tempted to be given a tour, but considering Reza's words, I wanted to be careful and not stray too far without knowing more about this world first. I think I'll stay home for today. I still haven't gotten used to everything, you know? I'll just accompany you back then. There we are. Home sweet home. F for now at least. Well, if you need anything, I'll be outside until my shift ends. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. See you tomorrow. See ya. I hadn't really looked at the apartment much, so I spent the rest of the day investigating it and relaxing. I considered checking out some of the phone numbers Remy had left for me, but I thought it was better to keep a low profile for now. I found the kitchen fully stocked, with plenty of groceries, though the variety was wasted on me. I hadn't been a particularly great cook in the first place, but what was more, I didn't even recognise some of the things I found there. Whether they were edibles that we had back home that I just didn't know about, or something completely alien, I wasn't sure. But I didn't want to take the risk of eating something I didn't know. After all, it was possible that some of the comestibles might be fine for them to eat, but still be poisonous to us. I was also glad to find a shelf that was filled to the brim with a variety of books. While I found the subject matter of man, myth or reality to be quite intriguing, I had to give up after just a few pages due to its exceptionally dry writing style, which I wasn't inclined to enjoy at the moment. In the end, I settled for an adventure novel about a dragon archaeologist who stumbles upon the remains of a long lost human civilization after which she is hunted by an evil organization who wants to use the found magical artifacts for its own nefarious purposes. While entertaining, I had to admit that it reminded me a little too much of the trashy novels we had at home. I certainly found it amusing that certain tropes were not really unique to us as a species, 
though I wondered whether this kind of literature had fallen into disfavour here, as it had back where I had come from. I was reading a particularly exciting scene, in which the hero, Sheridan, uses one of the magical artefacts shaped like a pair of human hands holding a scepter with a globe at the top, to prevent herself from being crushed and ground into a bloody pulp by an ancient human temple's moving walls, when I suddenly heard the doorbell ring. Oh, you look a little creepy there, buddy. I think it's the overbite. It looks a little weird. Oh, but you look cuter there. I must admit, I do like the little hats they've got, and they have like the little straps to like hold onto their horns. It's a cool little detail. Hello there, would you please sign here? I'm not signing away my rights with this, am I? I've got a letter for you that requires signature confirmation. I see. Looking over the clipboard the small dragon was holding up to me, I saw that the sender of the letter in question was Raza. There you go. I'm Lorem, by the way. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? What is this about? I'm just making small talk. Wait a minute, I recognise you. You tried to do the same thing with Raza. Maybe I should report you to your superiors for inappropriate behaviour towards your clients. But it's important! Please, just let me talk to Bubble Cube for a few minutes. You know how it is. If you want an interview with one of the humans, you'll have to get permission from the proper authorities. Help me out here, Bubble Cube. As an ambassador, you care about the accurate portrayal of humans in the media, don't you? Then you should talk to me. Otherwise, someone else will fill in the blanks, and who knows what they will come up with. Let me show you something. The small dragon opened his bag, rummaging through a number of letters and small packages. Huh, I think I lost it. Anyway, I wanted to show you some pictures of what people think humans look like. On some of them, they have like four heads and look nothing like you. It's crazy! What are you, Lorem? A reporter? No, I'm just... Do you want me to remove him, Bubble Cube? Is what he's saying true? Yeah, I guess. I see. That sounds pretty interesting, though. Alright, you can leave your number here, and maybe I'll call you later. But that's all I can promise. Thank you! Thank you so much! He quickly produced a small sheet of paper and scribbled his number on it. Afterwards, he sheepishly presented it with both hands. Alright, you got what you wanted. Off you go now. Uh, sorry about that. And also, if that sounded awful, sorry about that. But uh, don't worry about it. I guess that should be all. I'll see you tomorrow then. Right. With all the commotion, I had almost forgot that I was still holding Reza's letter. Within the plain envelope was a similarly plain sheet of paper in his handwriting. When I started reading, however, I saw that his wording was so full of the pleasantries I knew he hated that I assumed every word of it was faked as to conceal its true intent. He did mention I'd know what to do, but I was unsure of how I was supposed to decode the letter's secret message. I didn't remember ever having a conversation about this topic with him, yet he still relied on me to remember whatever it was I was missing. Or he thought I'd just be able to figure it out on my own. This is what it said. Hello, my dear friend. I hope this letter reached you swiftly and in good condition. Unfortunately, we were not able to catch up earlier, so I wanted to write you this letter. How have you been these last few years? What have you been doing? How's the family? I feel like there is so much we should talk about since we have not seen each other much recently. At least we have the chance to do so in this form. A quite an exciting venture we're on now, right? How have you liked it here so far? 
made any dragon friends yet. <laughs> anyway, I will be looking forward to a reply soon. Best regards, Reza. The various things came to mind. Only reading certain words or letters was one that I thought of immediately. But I couldn't make out anything after trying to find a system within its array of letters and lines. Maybe I had to look more carefully. I think I know its meaning. After looking at it for a while, I came to the conclusion that the secret message said that Reza wanted me to... With optional dialogue, well, optional text we can see, so... We need to plan Sebastian's murder! Or not, because apparently no, that's not it. We need to do nothing whilst he figures out what to do. Oh, that's not it either. Find out more about their government? Flee through the portal as soon as possible. We need to have a pizza party. Why? Because a pizza party? Come on! We need to steal a certain book from the library. <laughs> nope, we'll continue guessing. We need to find out where Maverick lives, so we can throw him a pizza party. Now you tell me. We need to break into the manufacturing plant and stop them from making generators that we desperately need because that makes sense. Well, I guess I'm unable to decode the message after all. Let's read between the lines. Lines, of course. Maybe I was supposed to read between them. I didn't have an implement on me with which I would have been able to read fine print. Though, with this handwritten letter, I doubted Reza could have done anything of the sort. I guess we're gonna have to split up and look for clues, gang. Or maybe he referred to the fact that we were both given an apartment, considering the things they provided for us. Maybe I just had to find the right object to decode the message. Uh, there were many everyday items here, though. And of course, I still had no idea in particular what I was looking for. To the bookshelf! The bookshelf was stocked with quite a variety of books on different topics. So, we can look at individual books. Um, and... None of the books have anything useful in them, but there is some optional text that I will... I'll leave it on screen for a second or two, so if you want to read it you can, but I'm not going to read it out loud because... There's quite a bit of text here, and I don't really feel like reading it if I don't have to. There we are, there's that one. I don't think there's anything in here. And who let this mess ever get to print? Sheesh. Anyway, I sold off the humanoids from outer space. Invasion by human aliens? Is that what they think we're like? Uh, when that fiction book, yeah. Born to serve. A politician, huh? I wonder what their actual government is like. Price and prayer. Politograph a politographical novel. God, that was a weird word. Anyway, there you are, people who want to read. No comment on that one. The Ixaman Sphere and how to use it. This should be a thrilling read. Now I know how to work in Ixman Sphere. Whatever that is. Let's look behind the books. Maybe Reza left another message here at some point. He could have known that I was going to live here. So I suppose it's possible that he helped with the preparations and hid something for me to find. Hmm. 
No, even after removing every single book from the shelf, there was still no indicator of anything that would help me decode his secret message. But even if Reza did leave a hint, this could have been anywhere in the apartment, and not just on this bookshelf. Well, looks like we're gonna have to look at the bathroom! Let's have a look inside the shower. Huh, <laughs> no shampoo to be found anywhere, of course. And no hint either, just some body wash. Inside the cabinet? No razors. There are some pain meds, though. Take some. I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but here we go. We should take some more. Oh, gang. Alright. Yep. Yes, in a, in a monologue, me. I'm feeling... strange. But it takes some more. I suppose one more can't hurt. I can't hurt because they're pain meds! <laughs> How long was I gone? Why did I think eating a whole bottle of pain medication would somehow help with my search? Let's go back. Oh, to the kitchen. In the fridge. Ah, plenty of stuff in here. Let's have a look at the... Look at the meat. It's just a slab of meat. Nothing special about it. Look at the milk. A pasteurized. At least they've got that down. Crapo... <laughs> no crapo... <laughs> Uh, crack open an egg and look inside. Nope, just a regular egg. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope, just a regular egg. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope, just a regular egg. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope, just a regular egg. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope. Just a regular egg. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope. Just a regular egg. Crack open an egg and look inside. Nope. Just a regular egg. Huh. Oh, those were all of them. I guess I just wasted a perfectly good batch of eggs. Oh. That unlocks an achievement, but um... I've gone back to pre-record some, like some, a couple of sections of this because the quality wasn't very good. So I do that. That will like pop the achievement. It's there on the side. I just, it just didn't show up. That's all. And now let's examine an unlabeled container. It's an unlabeled container with some sort of white liquid inside. Well, here goes nothing. Salty. And then it should pop up. You drank a mystery liquid. Woo. But we've already done that. Well, look in the pantry. And again, if you look at all the fruit inside, then you'll get an achievement. Uh, just some fruits and veggies here. If I put it on the floor and then step on it, what would happen? I'd be going on a date. But no, there's no hint here. Let's have a look at the fig. What do I know about figs? Quite a bit, actually. Figs are ripe with history, and still enjoy some cultural significance, especially in religious circles. For example, they are the leaves with which Adam and Eve covered themselves up in the Bible's book of Genesis. It also happens to be the kind of tree Buddha achieved enlightenment under. And not only that, but it's also mentioned in Greek mythology. Isn't it fascinating? But wait, there's more. The influence of figs also extends towards words, phrases, and sayings we still use today. Take the word sycophant, for example, which comes from a Greek expression meaning someone who shows the fig, which was a vulgar gesture at the time, or I don't give a fig, which of course is a fig of speech. 
It might as well be said that the influence of figs is as far-reaching as its fruit is succulent. Figuratively speaking, that is. I am afraid none of this actually helps with Reza's letter, though. Let's have a look at the pair, then. There are two of them. What a nice pair. Grapes. So, Daddy Grape finds his kid crying and asks, What's wrong, kid? But for all the tears, the kid couldn't get a single word out. Eventually, Dad enough, so he said, Stop what? No, I won't say it. It wasn't a good joke anyway. Finally, Lemon. Lemons, lemons. Lemons, of course! Why didn't I realise it sooner? Lemon juice is just about the simplest way to write a hidden message using household items. We learned about that in chemistry! In the most boring detail, of course. A message written in lemon juice on paper becomes just about invisible to the naked eye when dried. But after heating it gently, oxidisation occurs, making the message visible. I was sitting next to him in class when we learnt that. He made a joke about using the method to cheat on the next test, and I replied by saying he'd have to bring an iron. Had he really expected me to remember a random chemistry class that happened years ago? Uh, but then I did remember it after all. Meet me at the portal tonight, 10pm, was all the message said. I wasted a good amount of time, you know, passing out on pain meds and telling jokes, but I still had some time left before I had to go out to meet Reza. So I decided to make some lunch. I could have paid some scrambled eggs, if I hadn't broken them all earlier. Afterwards, I resumed reading my book about the continuing adventures of Sheridan and her exploits in destroying cultural artifacts. Unsurprisingly, it came to a happy ending, with the evil organisation stopped in its tracks, at least for now. I thought the ending was deliberately left open for ambiguity, but when I turned the page and saw the advertisement for the next entry in this apparently long-running series of books, I realised all this had just been a ploy to set up the inevitable sequel. Luckily, the disappointment didn't last long, as I had to get going to meet Reza at the portal. When I got outside, it didn't seem quite as dark as it was when I arrived yesterday. I might have had difficulties finding my way otherwise, but I could still see the portal in the distance. As I was walking, I wondered if anyone was following me, but the land seemed oddly deserted. Was everyone already asleep? Eventually, I arrived at my destination. Reza was already standing idly by the portal, his fidgeting making it obvious he had waited just for me. But I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am, and I hope I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to give it a like and also to subscribe to our channel for more videos, and hopefully we will see you next time.